Early in the morning, early in the morning, in the morning. What's going on the people? Them is your boy Cam Topical Juice and we are back with another video for you today. As you can see from the title, we are talking about Diddy, but specifically the real reason behind his downfall. As most of you should be aware, Diddy is currently sitting his noncy, monstrous ass down in federal prison right now, facing serious federal charges and looking at years and years in jail. He has been exposed as a narcissistic monster capable of serious, heinous crimes. But why are we actually witnessing his downfall now? Diddy has been protected for years. Why now? And that's what this video is all about. So guys, let's get straight into this video. All I can ask from you is if you like the video for me, it really helps me a lot and pushes the video out. If you're new here or you like me, please consider pressing that subscribe button. Press that bell to be notified. And if you want to support me and join my Patreon, click the link in the description below. It's cheaper than your daily coffee. So as I said, Diddy has been protected for years. Diddy faced absolutely no punishment for his part in the deaths of nine people in 1991. He avoided any punishment and wasn't even charged for any of the alleged grapes that he was involved in and partook in in 1991 for example, 1995 for example. He got away with punching up and beating up Steve Stout in 1999. He got away with shooting a woman in her face in a nightclub in 1999 also. And that just scratches the surface. That's the tip of the iceberg of all the multiple crimes that Diddy has committed and gotten away with. Not to mention his alleged involvement in the deaths of Tupac and Biggie, Kim Porter. So who did he annoy? Who did he piss off that got him in this situation? Let's introduce our antagonist to Diddy or protagonist, depending on how you view it, Diageo. If you guys have never heard of Diageo, Diageo is a global alcoholic beverage company that is worth an estimated $75 billion as of 2024. If you go back to 2021, they were worth double that, $140 billion. So we are talking about a huge global entity here, a very powerful company. In fact, a company that I actually did a placement in in 2018. I worked in Diageo's office in Northwest London for about a month and I got an insight into how big that company really, really is. But before we talk about Diddy's specific beef with Diageo, who really owns Diageo? Now, two of Diageo's largest shareholders are BlackRock and Vanguard. If you guys know anything about these two companies, these two companies basically, in simple layman's terms, run the world. They have their claws in every single industry you can possibly think of. As you can see on your screen right now, even Bloomberg calls BlackRock the fourth branch of the government because it's the only private agency that closely works with the central banks. BlackRock and Vanguard's assets under management is $8.6 and $8.1 trillion respectively. In total, they both own slash invested in 1,600 US companies. As you can see here, BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street owns the majority of stocks in Alphabet, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, AT&T and many, many others. As you can see here, the food industry, they own the majority of PepsiCo and many, many others such as Unilever, Nestle, Hershey's, Heinz. They own the majority of shares in the energy industry also the pharmaceutical and health industry. What about the digital media industry? They've got their claws in CBS, NBC, CNN, Disney. Remember CNN, that's a big one. The travel industry, Expedia, American Express, Airbnb, TripAdvisor, but not just industries. As you can see on your screen right now, they have also hired former government officials. As of 2021, at least three executives from BlackRock operate notable positions in President Joe Biden's cabinet. Biden appointed BlackRock executive Brian Deese as head of the National Economic Council and Adewale Adeyemo, former chief of staff to BlackRock's chief executive, is the top official at the Treasury Department. BlackRock lends money to the central bank, but it's also the advisor. It also develops the software the central bank uses. Dozens of BlackRock employees were in the White House with Bush and Obama. Data indicates that both companies have substantial first mover advantages in all prominent businesses in various sectors. In turn, they themselves are owned by shareholders. And the most surprising thing 
is that they own each other's stocks. BlackRock holds massive shares in Vanguard, whereas Vanguard also holds massive shares in BlackRock. Together, they form an immense network comparable to a pyramid. The smaller investors are owned by larger investors. Those are owned by even larger investors. So that gives you an insight into the powers that be that are controlling Diageo. Vanguard and BlackRock are two of the most powerful and influential companies ever in history. Every aspect of your human life, your day-to-day -day life, is being touched by BlackRock or Vanguard, or both, essentially. So that is a very, very powerful opposition. So now we've got our key players. Let's go through the timeline, guys. If you didn't already know, Diageo owns Ciroc. They own a large number of the alcoholic beverages that you drink on a day to day basis from Smirnoff to Captain Morgan's, Bailey's. Ciroc is one of their premium vodka brands. Now in 2007, Diageo Ciroc brand was losing them $40 million per year. They were hemorrhaging money. As part of their strategy, they wanted to get their premium brands into the urban community. Diageo realized the influence of Diddy at the time. Diddy was hugely, hugely influential. He had the culture. He was a massive part of the community. He was very good at marketing. So they wanted to work with him. Now it's very important to understand that when they went into partnerships together, Diageo and Diddy, Diddy had no ownership. This is key. Diddy was not an owner of Ciroc or any brand at this point. He was a boss, a massive, massive millionaire executive, but he was basically a glorified influencer. They paid him a flat rate, essentially, to promote and market the brand. That rate ended up being about $60 million a year just to market and promote Ciroc. But they were making more than that. The influence that Diddy had, they were making hundreds and hundreds of millions. And Diddy felt entitled to some of that. Now Diageo, they didn't want to pay Diddy hundreds of millions or if not billions, if he owned a brand. They wanted to keep him in a box. You know, when you've got these big, big elites, they don't want you to get too big. They want to kind of manage you and control you. So I've got no doubt in my mind that Diddy was probably up against a serious force here who wanted to box him off. But at the end of the day, when a force that powerful gives you an opportunity, you better stay in line. It's one of them ones still. You better stay in line, boy. As I said, Diddy had aspirations of ownership. That's what he wanted, ownership. Not just to be paid for doing a great job. He wanted ownership in one of the brands. This is where we get to the next chapter, the introduction of Delion. Now, Delion is a premium tequila brand. In 2014, they agreed a 50-50 joint venture of Delion, which would see Diageo use their supply and distribution networks, while Diddy will be the marketing genius. If Diddy was even 75-80% as successful with Delion as he was with Ciroc, they would have had to pay him hundreds of millions, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions because he was a 50-50 joint partner. Now, this is where we start to see the deterioration in the relationship between Diddy and Diageo because behind the scenes, Diageo weren't really committing to this partnership. They didn't want to pay this black man all this money. So what they were doing behind the scenes is they were purchasing other tequila companies. Fast forward to 2015, where Diageo completed the purchase of Don Julio. Fast forward to 2017, Diageo completed the purchase of Casamigos, George Clooney's brand, and they paid $1 billion for Casamigos. So Diddy is sitting here thinking, we've got a premium tequila brand here that we've gone 50-50 in. Why are you purchasing Don Julio, why are you giving George Clooney a billion dollars? Nah, man, this is a race thing. You man a racist, fam. That's what you're saying. You man a racist. I ain't really feeling this. And again, the relationship continued to deteriorate through this time. So after some seriously shoddy sales of Delion, yeah, Diddy was in uproar. Why are the sales so poor? What's going on here? And he did his own research. He did his own investigation. And what he found was systemically, they were not trying to make this succeed. I had to send my people down to Mexico, and this is just to tell you what the fight is about. They went down to Mexico, and when they got down there, they found out that there was zero agave planted for Delion. So there was no plan for us to be successful. There was no equal treatment. The other brands, they had agave planted. They had no agave planted for me. And sometimes you have to go check even your partners to see what's really going on. And so when I saw that, 
I was like, nah. As you saw from that clip there, Diddy was explaining that he sent his people to Mexico to look into what's going on with the supply chain and the distribution, etc., etc. When it comes to making tequila, the key ingredient is a blue agave plant. So what Diddy did is he sent his people to Mexico and he realized that all the blue agave plants were being allocated to other brands, e.g. Don Julio, e.g. Casamigos. He found that there were no agave plants dedicated to Deleon. That's where he decided he's had enough. He's tried to work with Diageo. He feels that he's being boxed off. He feels that they're prioritizing other people, white people. He feels that Diageo is only pushing Deleon in urban areas, black areas, low income areas also. He felt that they were categorically trying to keep the brand down. And I, I actually agree with him. I believe that Diageo didn't want Deleon to succeed because they wanted it all for themselves. And then they will start pushing the marketing back up. And that's where we finally get to May 2023, guys. That is the same month and year that Diddy decides to sue Diageo. And it's at that point, he fucked up, man. <laughs> you, you, you know he fucked up, right? Yeah. When you decide to sue a company as big as Diageo, where their shareholders are people that run the world, you are going to lose. You have the experience with major corporations like me, my particular experience with Beam Centauri, it was great in the beginning. It's great for us to work for them. It is not so cool when you start to own things. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like there's a point, they, they did a deal that mirrored what Puffy's deal with Diageo was for Syrah. So he didn't have ownership of that at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, like almost like $60 million a year at one point. So you see him go to daily on is when you see him have some issues and these people have really strong relationships don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case faster because he's making that them uncomfortable that's a big part of it the spirits business is it's not governed not only did he sue them he decided to defame their character diageo have been very clear on this this could have easily been a very simple business dispute that they could have sorted out but from when diddy started to claim that Diageo were actually systemically racist. That was where Diageo said, F this, we're coming for you, boy. Diddy decides to sue them for neglect, racism, and discrimination. Diageo actually denied this and accused Mr. Combs of mismanagement, and they accused him of breaching his contract. Diddy claims Diageo neglected his tequila brand, calling it urban and a black brand in favor of Casamigos. He alleged that the spirits giant sabotaged his Deleon brand tequila with shoddy packaging that made the product look cheap. As you can see here, the sales in 2022 were awful and Diddy alleged that Deleon has been chronically out of stock and has been hamstrung by a small distribution footprint. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not under any illusion that Diageo is a hero here. I truly believe Diageo, they probably are racist. They probably were trying to pigeonhole him. This is a billion dollar company, a British company, by the way, a billion dollar British company. Of course they're racist. <laughs> they don't want to see no Diddy get too big for his boots. So they were probably trying to maintain that and trying to keep the money for themselves. So I believe Diddy was frustrated with the arrangement. But what Diddy failed to realize is that he thought he was bigger than he was. He thought he was untouchable. He decided to sue the most powerful companies in the world with all the baggage that he's got. All these freak off stuff, all these grapes and alleged essays he's involved in. He did that shit. 100% he did that shit. But they protected him for decades. The people in power, when he was making them millions, he was protected. Do you understand? But as soon as he went up against the man and forgot his place, they humbled him real quick. Because it was only a couple months after that lawsuit did Cassie file her suit. Now, I'm not suggesting Cassie's a part of this conspiracy with Diageo to, to get Diddy. I'm not suggesting that. It's very likely that even if he didn't sue Diageo, he probably would have got sued um, by a Cassie anyway. But the point is, the fallout from that wouldn't have happened. If Diddy stayed in line and he got sued by Cassie, the footage wouldn't have got leaked to CNN. The police and the FBI would not have raided his crib. All of that wouldn't have happened, in my opinion. As you can see here in January 2024, so this year, Diddy and Diageo miraculously settled. They somehow settled. Diddy, surprisingly, out of nowhere, dropped all his lawsuit. Dropped it all. Said, listen, you know what? We're going to part ways. I don't want no problems. Now, guess how much ownership he has over Deleon? Zero. Diageo bought that out 
Diageo own 100% of Delion now. Now, it actually says in one article that Diageo paid him 200 million for his share in the stake, but that stake would have been worth a lot more. A lot, a lot, a lot more. And he needed that 200 mil for lawyer fees, bro, at this point. So he just said, you know what? Give me what I can get. I'm taking what I can get. I'm dropping the entire lawsuit. I don't want no problems. It's done. Then we see the real downfall of Diddy. FBI starting to raid him. The, the Cassie video coming to light. Yeah, that was leaked to CNN. Guess what Diddy and his lawyers think? They believe that the government leaked the video to CNN. Why would the government do that? Why would Diddy even think that? You know why, right? Because Vanguard and BlackRock are punishing this man. They are punishing him for not knowing his place. Bro, all these millionaires and billionaires are in free coughs. The free coughs, the free cough stuff is normal. Everyone's doing drugs and everyone's doing weird SA demonic satanic sex rituals at these parties. Yeah, that's been happening for decades. Clive Davis was doing that in the 70s. This is old news. The free coughs is old news. He is not going down for partying, guys. It's because he's got so much dirt on him and he pissed off the wrong people. It's as simple as that. When you don't humble yourself and you think you're too big and you bite the hand that feeds you, bro, you're finished. Especially as that hand that's feeding you is literally attached to the most powerful body in the world. Did he sue Diageo, who is the owner of Ciroc, for uh, racism or something like that? Diageo apparently might have lost the lawsuit and Diddy might have won it. They did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Diageo allegedly sends out private investigators to start snooping around and seeing some fucked up shit that Diddy might do. Because there is one way that you could nullify their contract. And that is if he breaks a morality clause. Because a lot of times contracts have morality clauses. So if you are charged with a federal crime, that might be enough to break your contract, right? Because, for example, if you're the ambassador of a brand, but then you're charged with a, fe with a felony, you can't stay on as the ambassador for the brand, so that would nullify it. So maybe in an effort to save the billion-dollar payout or whatever it was, they tell these you know, private investigators, dig up as much shit as possible. They've got connections to feds. I mean, this is the liquor lobby at the end of the day, right? This is a very powerful lobby. They start giving them this information and then the feds go after it. They have a real case. Ultimately, guys, let me know your thoughts. I believe I'm right on this one. A lot of people on the internet also believe in the same thing, but I don't care about being right. I care about the truth. So whatever the truth is, I aim to pursue it. That's why I don't hide and I show my face when I do these things. I ain't scared of finding the truth. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you lot at the next video. Stay safe, stay blessed, stay vigilant. Peace. Let me go get my hair done.